Hey guys, what's up? This is Ryan123 here today, and today I am doing a script that you guys have been asking for for quite a while. I'm trying to get all these ones off the table just because I know these ones are probably the ones you guys want the most, and I feel really bad for having have having not done them yet. That makes sense, right? And so today we are going to be doing watch my mouse here sprinting but we're going to be doing it with shift so you can't tell because I can't unless I like I guess I could put like the fake keyboard up here and <laughs> push the shift button on the virtual keyboard but yes I am holding down shift like I'll hit it really hard and you can hear I guess so there's shift and now I'm running and then I let it go and now I'm walking. It's kind of fun if you said it as fast as I had it because you kind of like slide. <laughs> but that might be because I don't know. But anyways guys so yeah let's go ahead and hop out of here and I will show you how to do this. So this is a local ordeal so you're going to want a local sorry this is a client side ordeal is more technologically accurate so you're going to want a local script in the starter GUI because that's pretty much the easiest place to put it technically you could put it in the starter pack I wouldn't don't do it put in the starter GUI and then let's go ahead and open her up oh yeah and if you don't know just how to get one just right click I can't show you because apparently my recorder doesn't capture my right click dial drop down menu but you right click go to insert object and click local script and you should get a local script so we're gonna head and go ahead and open it up now just so you guys know this probably is not the most efficient way to do this oops but it works so let me get rid of that because that's being useless and let me zoom in but here's this the script so as you can see right here we have the just getting the player just for to change their speed and stuff so down here is where we set it up so we get the user input service we want the input began and the input ended um events that's what those are called and then we will call the different methods so the first method is the on input began event where we will pass through the input and the game processed things don't worry about the game processed yet that will be more valuable in future tutorials basically what this does as far as i can understand is it registers whether or not the button or mouse was pushed over a GUI or just in the game screen in general so I guess the idea is is if you have a GUI selected like if you are your mouse is over a GUI and you push like a button or something that it will register with the GUI instead of the game in general but I'm not a hundred percent sure on that so I will get back to you guys on what this actually does but we do need this so that the method will work anyway so then the next thing you want to do is you do the you get the input and we are using a keyboard because I don't I think technically you don't need this line technically you don't need this if but we're just doing it just cuz just to show you that this can be used for other things I think user input service can also be used for mobile buttons and maybe Xbox controllers I think it can but I would not recommend using user input service for something like that in fact I wouldn't recommend using user input service for a lot of things like I probably wouldn't even do it for a shift run because let's say if I were to use context action service here I could have a mobile button appear simultaneously that let players sprint but for right now this is just going to be the simple for desktop PCs user input service 
and later on I will make another context action service on how to do a shift and mobile button sprint and maybe we'll even look into the Xbox developing I haven't done that a lot so I can't promise anything on that but hey I will see and so the next thing we get is the key press you don't need this I just did this just because I was trying to make it look cleaner you don't need this line though you can just put input dot key code where we have key press so you can just say if input dot key code equals it I don't know why I did that but then you have en whatever that says sorry I kinda have to be far away from my screen so I can talk into the mic but I can't see very well when I do that so yeah but dot key code dot left shift then so this is saying if left shift is pressed because this is when it begins so this event will fire this function will get called when the left shift is pressed down and it changes our humanoids walk speed to 164 I think that's what I have it set to then this one is on input ended which as we can see down here is fired when the left shift is released it's basically the same thing except we just put the walk speed back to de back to the default of 16 so as you can see this wasn't that tricky of a tutorial let me go back and we'll go back out into here um, it works you guys saw it work I am um, if you need it but we will in the future work more on context action service I have been getting a lot of questions on like positioning those and really user input service is kind of outdated just because it's not as simultaneous as the context, ash context action service I almost said like action service maybe I've been playing too much Dark Souls just kidding I haven't played that in a long time but anyways so yeah this works for our purposes today and who knows maybe you guys if you go back and watch the context action service tutorial that we did with this block over here maybe you guys can figure out how to do it on yourself by yourself because to be honest it's pretty much the same thing it's just worded a little differently but anyways guys that's pretty much it for this tutorial i hope you enjoyed please subscribe for future tutorials including more user input stuff i i'm starting to really get interested in stuff like this especially since roblox is becoming more cross-platform so it's going to be interesting to see how this all goes so i'm going to try to put out tutorials that help you guys with cross-platform developing because it's kind of frustrating when you are like on the Xbox and you're trying to play a game and they don't have it optimized or when you're on your mobile phone. I've never played Roblox on the mobile phone, but I assume it would be frustrating if you're on the mobile phone and you can't perform a function just because it's not available to you because you don't have a keyboard. Or do GUIs even show up on mobile phones? I would imagine they would, but I don't know. But anyways, guys, yes, yeah, please subscribe for future content. Don't forget to post a comment down below in it with any suggestions or questions. And use our tutorial colon for any tutorial suggestions you may have. And please be sure to leave a like as it really helps out the channel. And I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.